Yeah, welcome to our Wanderlust edition of DXB Today. With the weekend just around the corner, many people will have left already for an Eid break, but for those that are still wondering, can I, should I, shouldn't I? Hopefully, uh, we will be able to give you a bit of good advice. For those looking to get away, for those for looking to do things right here in Dubai, we've got lots to do on our Eid special. This is what's coming up on the show today. Maytha signed up for a day of fun at the Real Madrid World, the newest destination in Dubai parks and resorts, combining sports and theme park experiences all in one. And talented singer and music producer Bruno Fave joins us in studio to close the night. Boys, Eid holidays. I'm very excited about my Eid travels. I want to know all about your plans. But before that, for all the parents watching out there, if you're someone like me who assumed that school closes straight after Eid holidays, it doesn't. I just found that out the hard way today. I was hyping my daughter up saying, no more school after Eid holidays. And the teacher said, you do realize there's two more weeks of school left. And I was like, I should read the school newsletter more. I definitely don't understand that. So your daughter is going to take Eid off and then yeah. she's got to go back to school. There's two more weeks of school. Listen, I'm not complaining. I mean, it's daycare, so it's already paid for. So I'm not mad at that. And I probably need to read the school newsletters a little bit more is, uh, you know, the conclusion. But Eid plans, what are you guys up to? I mean, if I don't stay in the UAE, I like to stay in the UAE during the Eid because it's one of the best places to be. But if I am going to travel, it would be to go back home to uh, Jordan to see my family because we actually do celebrate. Um, so I'd go see my grandma, my parents, uh, my cousins and stuff. It's you know, family occasion. Tom, do you go to Jordan to see my family? Uh, sure, no worries at all. More than happy to. If it's open door policy, I'm up for that. Uh, back to London, so yeah, similar back home, um, uh, but for completely different purposes altogether. Um, the Euros start tonight. Uh, one of the biggest football tournaments in the world. I haven't got tickets to go over to Germany to watch a game, so I thought second best, I'll go to London and watch a game in a popular venue uh, in uh. London. <laughs> so end of the season at DXB today, start of the Euros, kicking off the summer, Eid break, it's all come together. I actually was planning on going before I realised it was Eid. I suddenly realised when, when I booked my tickets, and the flights were a little bit more expensive than usual. Yeah, that is the rough part was when it comes to the flights and stuff. I mean, luckily there are options. Uh, you can fly out from a different Emirate, you can get it cheaper, but it is, it, it's very difficult. It's good to know that you two are getting your hot girl summer on, but our guest co-host today is quite the wanderlust aficionado, so let's find out who he is. Hello, this is Omar al -Shannar. I'm the founder of Beyond With You. Can't wait to see you guys today. Yes, Omar will join us right here in just a little bit. But first off, taking off a fun destination that you definitely need to check out before summer officially starts. We sent Maytha down to the world's first Real Madrid themed park to find out what special attractions they had to offer. Take a look at this. I'm at the Dubai Parks and Resort where I'm about to visit the first ever football theme park in the world. But not just any football theme park, it's the Real Madrid theme park. Let's check it out. Yeah. I'm here with Mr. Rami Mashimi, the Vice President of Sales for Dubai Holding Entertainment. Thank you for having us in the first ever football theme park in the world, but also the first ever Real Madrid theme park in the world in Dubai. Thank you for coming. Real Madrid has a very strong fan base, one of the biggest clubs in the world with a very rich history of trophies. The Real Madrid uh, world has three zones. We start with the Champions Avenue, then the Stars Avenue, and then the Celebration Plaza. If you want to talk about the roller, roller coasters, the Hala Madrid uh, roller coaster is the first wooden roller coaster in the region. The second uh, attraction, which is my favorite, is the Star Flyer. The Star Flyer is the tallest uh, attraction in the world. It goes up to 462 feet. And in Real Madrid world, we tried our best to offer the experience for six years old up to the families, as I said. So there are many interactive uh, attractions that family can, can do. The experience from trying the locker rooms, trying the, the, the warm-ups, 
play with your stars, take a lot of, a lot of photos with your friends and family. It's an amazing experience. To showcase what Dubai Holding Entertainment today has. We're, we're the largest in the region when it comes to entertainment. We are committed to provide the best entertainment across the whole city. I'm about to ride the Hala Madrid coaster, but before I do, I need to do a bit of a wardrobe change. See you in a bit. And there we go. Now I'm ready to ride this ride. Come with me. Hala Madrid, let's see what you've got. Well, I have my hijabi safety on. I have my camera strapped in, and I'm now going to venture to the Star Flyers tallest ride in the park. So wish me luck. <laughs> let's go. Barefoot and ready to ride. Double safety, which is a must for this type of height. So wish me luck. I feel like a kid again. Well, that was quite an adventure that I had here in Real Madrid theme park. I got my merch, and I think Real Madrid just won them a new fan. See you next time. Maitha, thanks so much indeed for that report. And that's a great alternative if you're looking to stick around here for the Eid break, or of course, uh, over the long summer, then there's a great alternative. Head down to Dubai Parks and Resorts and check out their latest offering. Right, our guest co-host today is a founder creating experiences for the wild and free spirited through his dedicated bespoke platform Beyond With You. Please welcome to DXB today, Omar al Shana. Omar, thanks so much indeed for being with us. Hi Tom, thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to have you with us today to proffer some great advice to us all on our uh, travel over the course, not just of the Eid break, but the summer months coming around the corner as well. Um, a lot of people out there will think, hang on, given the world's going dig digital and given the fact that more and more people are booking online and taking control of their travel plans, why set up your own organisation beyond, beyond, with, beyond with you? Uh, uh, and what does it, the, the sort of purpose it fills in the business? I think the best way to answer that is actually through our mission. Our mission actually is to unzoom the world. I think we have, since COVID, become so digital but sometimes we need to get out of the digital and go to the real world. And <coughs> what makes it is experiences. We're human. So I believe humanity is all about connection. Mm. Connecting with ourselves, connecting with the destination, connecting with those that travel with us, with the culture, so much. And I believe that's where you come in because it's about building a community with like-minded people, uh, which is uh, mainly aimed to inspire to, uh, to, for, for people to feel accepted, excited, inspired, and most importantly, to feel like they belong. Can you share with us some memorable uh, stories that some of your passengers or your, your travelers would have uh, shared with you? Look, we're all about impact and experiences, and we go to great lengths to curate the experiences. Many times, um, we actually ask the people traveling with us uh, to understand more about what their aspirations are. So I can recall one moment where we had um, a young gentleman with us. He was 19, I think, and he was asthmatic. It was on a trip to Peru, and we curated the trip in such a way that, of course, Peru is high altitude, so Cusco by itself is 3,500 meters. So we curated in such a way and we acclimatized him for a hike at 5,200 meters. I can tell you on the farewell, and he completed it, and everything was great. And on the farewell dinner, we were all sharing our experiences. And I will never forget, I got goosebumps. Mm. He said, I thought all my life, 
I will be controlled by asthma and this is going to dictate my life. And for me to do a hike at 5,200 meters, which by the way is challenging, mm. even for somebody that doesn't have asthma, it just made my day in. And I think that's what Beyond is all about. I absolutely love that. So tell us a little bit about, more about what Beyond is about, maybe a basic question, but for those who don't know, what experiences can the average person watching this who wants to get involved, what sort of experience would they get? What's the step-by-step -step process? So we're actually uh, driven by travel, adventure, exploration, and having a zest for life. And uh, unzooming the world is really what we're all about and at the core. Um, so what people can expect is a well-curated trip. And a matter of fact, we actually, even prior to them traveling with us, we, we interview them to ask them, what are they up to and what are they looking for? And then we advise them to go in a particular direction based on uh, what we feel will, will actually serve them. So uh, we travel in very small groups. So people can expect six to 10 because we're all about connection and, and having really large groups of 20 people traveling, it's very difficult to connect. The noise is just too much. So having a small group of six to 10 people that's what they can expect. They can expect to connect with the destination, with each other. We've actually had people that had never met and after the trip have become best friends. So the business model for big resorts and popular resorts is numbers. It's the numbers sure. game as well. Sure. What you do is a lot more meaningful Absolutely. as well. So does that open up different destinations? And if so, is there such a thing as a hot spot or is any spot around there uh, possible and hot? Well, for us, we always believe that it's the people that make the destination. Right. I've traveled to Iceland for seven times with different groups, and I've led different groups there. And every single trip was different. So for us, the people is at the core of every, every journey. Uh, I think to, in a short, uh, it's the people that will make the destination. However, having said <laughs> that, um, yes, there are some trending destinations, you know, uh, the uncommon is now common. So uh, Iceland, Norway, uh, Morocco, uh, so many destinations. Cape Town, Cape Town's beautiful. Yeah. I just love Cape Town. So many places. I've been wanting to go to Morocco for the longest time, so I am going to text you after the show, Omar. <laughs> uh, please stay with us. Uh, we have so much more to ask you and learn from you about. Thank so you. thank you so much for sticking around. It's time for a quick break. Coming up, we discuss the must-visit travel destinations you need to check out this Eid break with the team of leading GCC hospitality and tourism representation company, TCA. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>